Well, thank you, uh, Patricia. It's wonderful to be here. I, some of you are uh, longtime friends and collabor collaborators, and some of you I, I'm not sure I've met, uh, but it's, it's, it was wonderful to be invited uh, to speak with you today. Um, sort of uh, mentioning something that Patricia did. I, I, sometimes people ask me what got me involved in politics, and then I tell them, well, I was seventh grade president, and I've never looked back since. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's, it's great to be with you. Um, this afternoon. I was pleased to hear that this year's conference would be Health and Housing Summit. Uh, that cross-discipline theme is very uh, fitting approach for Santa Clara County. It often gets said, uh, but it's very true. This county has a uniquely strong history of collaboration, and the fact that you're all here uh, this afternoon, I think, is evidence of that. Our county health and hospital system, our nonprofit providers, our health plans, our labor movement, our business leaders, our hospital partners, and many others have partnered on a lot of different issues. It's this collaborative spirit that has allowed us to be leaders in so many different initiatives over the years, and it gives us a big advantage. I was asked to talk a little bit about what's on the horizon for healthcare in our county. But before we gaze forward, I want to first look back and talk a little about where we've come in recent years. As someone who has served on the county's health and hospital committee for seven years, and as chair of that committee for three years, I have always had as my top priority making sure the county was prepared for health care reform. I viewed my role as someone, uh, as I viewed my role not as someone who constantly criticized the system for not being good enough, but as someone willing to listen to what our system needed in order to improve and then provide it through board action. Early on, there were very dark days, but I never doubted for a second that we couldn't pull through and succeed. I will look back at what the county and its partners have accomplished in healthcare as some of the most important work that I have done. We have made tremendous strides in the past few years. With Medi-Cal enrollment, Santa Clara County has exceeded all expectations. When healthcare reform was approaching, we anticipated an increase of about 30,000 to 40,000 Medi-Cal enrollees in the county. Instead, we've seen an increase of more than 62,000 Medi-Cal patients just within our system. The number of uninsured patients at VMC has dropped 88% since December of 2013. Thank you, President Obama. I mean, really, it's a remarkable turnaround. And I still just can't believe that there's so many Republican governors in our country who still refuse to expand Medicaid. It's just uh, unconscionable that they would deny people health care. Meanwhile, we've expanded our primary and specialty care capacity. Even though VMC is responsible for far more patients, our emergency department visits are actually starting to decrease now that patients are able to get more appropriate care earlier. Wait times in our pharmacies, emergency department, and phone system have significantly declined. Mortality rates due to sepsis have been cut in half. We've also been able to significantly improve VMC's financial position. This past year, VMC monthly billing production reached its highest recorded level. Collections increased $111 million in 2014. The positive trend continues this year. Given the county's mission of providing treatment regardless of ability to pay, VMC will always need some subsidy from the county general fund. But VMC's recent financial improvement has been so strong, the hospital was able to return $65 million to the general fund last year. We made an incredible turnaround. We've created a patient family advisory program to get ongoing feedback from our patients on how to improve the patient experience. We've developed innovative partnerships between managers and frontline staff to find new ways to improve individual units. We've begun to integrate behavioral health into our primary care clinics. All of these efforts have resulted in better coverage, better access, and better care for our residents. It's been a good couple of years. But there is much more work to be done. One of the issues on the horizon is the number of individuals 
who remain without coverage. Despite the remarkable progress we've made uh, through the ACA, there are still over 100,000 county residents who remain uninsured. That's why I'm proud to say that two weeks ago, the county launched a new coverage program for adults left out of health reform. In partnership with our nonprofit community clinics, the program will offer affordable coverage to low-income individuals who don't qualify for Medi-Cal or coverage California. In some ways, this action was the accumulation of 15 years of tremendous effort by the community and political leaders to expand access to coverage in this county. As Kathleen King well knows, it was in January 2001 when Santa Clara County first launched the Children's Health Initiative and the Healthy Kids Program, becoming the first county in the nation to attempt to ensure every child has access to health insurance. At the time, Kathleen is always the first one to start applauding when I say that. Um, at the time, we had about 71,000 uninsured children. Now, and for several years, virtually every child in our county has had access to coverage. For uninsured adults, we could never quite offer a program like Healthy Kids because the scale of the problem was too large for county resources to cover alone. State or federal action was really needed. Now that the federal action has come, we finally have a coverage solution for so many low-income adults who didn't have it before. The next step is to close that final gap. Again, our county has decided to lead to find a way to provide better care to those last individuals who remain without a coverage option. There's still a great deal of work to do to implement this effort. We've starting, we're starting a pilot program where we will enroll 5,000 members, then we'll evaluate the program and build on it. There are some other valuable opportunities on the horizon to better provide care to our highest need residents. Two weeks ago, the state and federal government reached a high level agreement on a new five-year Medicaid waiver, which will provide critical funding and flexibility for our public hospitals in California. The waiver will allow us to continue our reform for county health delivery system to increase efficiencies and improve health outcomes. It will provide opportunities for better care coordination and allow for improvements in dental care. In my role as chair of the California State Association of Counties Health and Human Services Committee, I've been working to ensure California would get a strong new Medicaid waiver. And just a week before the expiration of our existing waiver, negotiations between the state and federal government were looking pretty grim. But many of us worked closely with our congressional delegation, and we were able to secure a very good high-level agreement with many opportunities for us in Santa Clara County. But it's going to take a lot of work. One key opportunity included the waiver is the whole person care pilot program, which is a $1.5 billion competitive funding program to provide better, more integrated care for our highest need patients. Not every county will get funding. Spanish County is uniquely positioned in that we've already launched initiatives aimed at approving care for the highest users of our system. The federal government also has agreed to a new waiver specifically for substance use disorder treatment. It is the first of its kind in the country and also very exciting. Santa Clara County has had an organized delivery system in place for substance use treatment for many years. And because of this foresight and experience, our county is serving as a statewide model for implementation. This waiver will allow us to expand and better connect our substance use services with primary care, provide reimbursement for recovery services and case management, and potentially allow us to provide valuable services that we never could in the past. And for those of you who provide these type of services, it really is hallelujah, um, because we have all known what the problems were, but we just didn't have the, the money and the resources to pay for them. So it's a, it's a big step forward. Following the tragic death of inmate Michael Tyree, our board sought to perform a comprehensive review of our custody system and implement necessary changes. 
The commission will investigate how we can more safely and effectively manage the mentally ill population, um, hold correctional staff accountable, ensure inmates, advocates, and inmate families can report potential abuse, increase training for all custody staff, and improve in-court support and programming. We know Michael Tyree was slated to be released from jail, but was waiting for a mental health bed in the community to be placed in. Unfortunately, this is too common of a problem. Last week, we had 85 people in custody waiting for mental health services and housing, and 29 people for waiting for substance abuse disorder residential beds. That's why I've advocated for the Blue Ribbon Task Force uh, and our county administration to place particular focus on mental health resources for our inmates. It is critical that we provide greater treatment options for inmates in custody and upon release. It is also critical that we provide better preventative services to ensure individuals who don't belong in jail never end up there. One issue is that we, that one issue that we are current one I'm sorry one issue is that there are currently no mobile behavioral health crisis services for adults in Santa Clara County. This is one of the missing pieces of our continuum of care. Next year, Santa Clara County plans to launch new mobile crisis support teams to provide crisis and outpatient mental health care to individuals in the community who have limited access to service. These teams will offer the availability of confidential counseling space in the field. They will allow uh, law enforcement and other community partners to summon the rapid response of therapists who will be able to provide the on-site de-escalation assessment and referral to services. As far as what else is on the horizon, I think it can best be described in one word, prevention. For all the great things that the Affordable Care Act achieved, what it did not do was truly address the rising costs of health care. The U.S. spends more than twice as much per capita on health care as the average developed country. If the cost of care continues to es escalate, eventually access to care is going to be threatened. We need to help people avoid the need for complex, expensive services. In other words, we need to invest in more and better prevention strategies. In his State of the County address, uh, Board President Dave Cortese called for a bold local initiative to stem the tide of the epidemic of diabetes. Based on my track record for championing innovative public health programs, I was asked to lead an effort that can serve as a model for other jurisdictions. Diabetes is one of the major drivers of increased health care costs. In Santa Clara County, 18% of adults have been told that they have diabetes or are pre-diabetic and countless others could be at high risk for developing the disorder. Since 2011, VMC's diabetic population has soared from 15,000 patients to more than 35,000 patients. Over the last eight months, county leaders, community clinics, hospitals, physicians, health plans, and other stakeholders have come to the table to begin to develop a bold diabetes prevention initiative for the county. And some of those partners are here in the room today. This effort launched the Together We Can Prevent Diabetes campaign. It's led to hundreds of new screenings and referrals to care. We're now working to launch several pilot projects to expand access to diabetes prevention programs. The obesity epidemic is a multifaceted issue. There is no one single solution. We need many partners addressing the challenge from, from multiple angles. In the past, I spearheaded the creation of the first in the nation law requiring restaurants to meet basic nutritional standards for kids' meals that offer toys. I also authored comprehensive nutritional standards to improve the nutrition of the six million meals served by the county each year and brought together local partnership to install 100 water bottle filling stations 
in schools and public spaces. And we need more of those kinds of ideas to provide water instead of soda and nutritional food rather than fast food junk. We need to provide the public better information on the health dangers of drinking too many sugar-loaded beverages. We need to enact a tax to reduce soda consumption and provide funding to combat obesity. Ultimately, the path to better health will require taking on the powerful interests like big food and big soda. We've done that before and we can do it again. And we must never forget that we still need to take on in tobacco. Smoking continues to be the single largest prevent for preventable cause of death. Unfortunately, the vast majority of smokers pick up the habit when they are teens and young adults. Under my direction in 2010, the county passed one of the most comprehensive series of tobacco and smoking pollution control ordinances in the nation. And we always get a rating of A from the American Cancer Society. Um, including the establishment of a local tobacco retail permit that can take away a retailer's ability to offer tobacco product, products if they sell to minors. It's the one club that we sort of needed for a lot of these mom and pop stores um, that uh, sell uh, cigarettes to minors. Last year, Santa Clara County placed similar limitations on e-cigarettes, and the fact that the state of California can't regulate e-cigarettes like they do um, regular tobacco just shows the absolute power that big tobacco still has. In May, the Board of Supervisors uh, supported my proposal to raise the purchasing age to 21 for tobacco and e-cigarettes in the unincorporated area of the county. This law will go into effect on January 1st. We are one of the few jurisdictions in the nation with such a policy, which is why Big Tobacco is already signaling their plans to challenge us very, very strongly. After years of public health gains with the advent of e-cigarettes, smoking behaviors seem to be becoming popular with youth again. We need aggressive measures to combat big tobaccos, uh, increase efforts to hook young people on nicotine. The best way to prevent a lifetime of smoking and the chronic conditions it can bring is to never start in the first place. Another project that is well underway that I'm very excited about and has showing promising results is the Universal Screening Project. In 2013, through my leadership with First Five and as president of the Board of Supervisors at the time, I called on our county to ensure developmental screenings are regularly conducted to enable the earliest possible detection of social, emotional, and developmental concerns for children. Prior to the launch of the project, more than 18,000 children under the age of six in the county were thought to have unidentified development, developmental delays. These concerns, often undiagnosed until children enter kindergarten, can lead to a lifelong problems, many of which can be prevented with earlier screening. Since January of 2013, the project has completed 23,000 screenings, more than 1,100 children whose needs otherwise may have gone undetected have been identified and connected with services. These numbers will continue to rise. While screenings thus far have been limited to high-risk areas in San Jose and in Gilroy, we plan to expand the project to all clinics within the county. HIV-AIDS remains a major health concern, even though much progress has been made. There are more than 3,500 people living with HIV-AIDS in Santa Clara County, in 2014, 155 new cases were diagnosed. Our county has taken action in recent years to expand testing programs and to provide case management service for homeless individuals with HIV AIDS, but we can and we need to do more to eradicate this disease. In 2011, the United Nations announced a global uh, effort to end the HIV epidemic. The Getting to Zero campaign promotes three main goals reach zero new HIV transmissions, zero HIV-related deaths, and zero stigma. Making these kinds of bold goals a reality requires actions from local communities. That's why we, at our Board of Supervisors' December 8th board meeting, I will be calling on our public health department 
to develop our own Getting to Zero campaign. Nearly all of the efforts that I've talked about today have or will require significant collaborative effort. They require a lot of meetings, incremental progress, trial and error, and time. I'm sure you all know this. But in preparing for this talk, I was asked to say a little bit about why it is that Santa Clara County pushes the envelope so often, and specifically what has driven me to put forward so many ambitious initiatives uh, for the county to tackle. In our part, we set the bar high in this county because we understand that local communities often have to be the first to try new initiatives, come up with the next good idea, and prove that it can work. Change often has to happen from the local level up. When we passed the toy ordinance, we didn't do it just to promote healthier kids' meals in the unincorporated areas of Santa Clara County. The idea was to do the initial groundwork so others could follow. San Francisco later passed its own version of the law, and New York is considering it. Moreover, the fast food industry has taken notice. Wendy's finally got toys out of their children's meals, and so did Jack in the Box. Other fast food restaurants are feeling the pressure to provide healthier options. It's the same kind of thinking that led Supervisor Cortese and I to work this past year to pass a living wage policy to require those companies and organizations we do business with to pay wages that can help support self-efficiency. The past two decades in Silicon Valley have taught us that widely shared prosperity just doesn't happen by itself. Even when the economy is booming, prosperity has not automatically trickled down to all workers. To address this challenge, we need a conscious policy decisions and strategies. That's why I called on our county to do our part to raise wages. A friend recently told me that he thinks the reason that I'm not afraid to challenge the status quo or take on powerful interests is because I seem to lack fear. He thought this lack of fear came from my experience as a gay man, which got me thinking. When I reflect back 31 years ago, when I came out publicly, it was risky because the environment was so anti-gay. Uh, if you know um, uh, the times uh, in, in the early 80s when there were uh, Anita Bryant, if you know that name, uh, my goodness. And uh, uh, anyway, there were um, policies that were overturning all of the sort of non-discrimination ordinances that had already been passed a little earlier and it happened in San Jose as well and um, it, was a, it was a tough time but it was during that time that I did come out um, even though it could mean losing your job and losing your housing because at that point there were no laws you know, uh, protecting you and over the ensuing, ensuing years Wigsy Stevenson and I, and I think many of you know Wigsy, uh, became two of the most vocal and most public LGBT residents in our county as tough as it was to come out as a young political staffer, it was a cakewalk compared to the hostility that I would later encounter when we fought so many battles, such as defunding the Boy Scouts by the United Way, that was fun, fighting against ballot, ballot initiatives um, for people who remember that were on the ballot for several years to quarantine AIDS patients, um, advocating for LGBT sensitivity training for police officers after a young um, transgender uh, person was shot by a police officer. And long before the Supreme Court decision on gay marriage, fighting for recognition of gay marriages by the city of San Jose. I still remember that evening, um, the auditorium was just packed with people very angry at us. I do think I learned that if I could confront anti-gay and anti-AIDS bigotry by the religious right, all other obstacles seemed easy. Big tobacco, big soda, who cares? <laughs> We've come uh, a long way on many, many issues. Equality, social justice, and health care for all. Big challenges will still remain. We are up against some major obstacles, but none of them are insurmountable. And I encourage all of us to be bold. I am now in my final term of my most rewarding job that I've ever had. I have three years left. I want to make sure that I don't leave office without 
having done everything that I can to improve the quality of life and the health of our residents. So come to the county with your bold ideas and all of your energy. We are ready to partner with you. We're ready to work with all of you to move this community forward even more. Better health is ahead. Thank you very much.